part four of the 1985 BF-1000R restoration reboot video series is a catch up on the paint progress to date, as new content has been delayed while the paint booth build was completed. In the previous video, we completed all the bodywork repairs and paint prep ready for color. In this video, we cover color, first layers of clear, decal application, and second layers of clay. For all of the body panels, with the exception of the lower, which will be covered in a separate how to video. Paint is from Color Right in the US and comprises of the R134 Fighting Red, laid over the 1090 base coat, the NH138 Shasta White, and PB127. Candy Illusion Blue, which is laid over the 1000 base coat. My approach is to first lay down the Shasta White on all body panels, as this will also work as a good base for the other colours. Using all the measurement data and photos taken for reference in part 2, I roughly lay out the white areas and stripes on each panel. This does not have to be exact, as I will be masking off the white areas to exact dimensions before applying the other colours. An easy option here is to actually paint the entire bodywork as the white, then lay in the other colours. But that's a big surface area to cover on this bike and would be extremely expensive. Stage is to tape out the white areas and stripes precisely to the measurements taken from the original paint scheme. Where I opted to use templates, such as here on the tail unit and solo seat now, I apply them then tape to the pattern. I repeat these steps on the tank and upper cowl. The tank stripes are by far the most challenging because of the complex contours. This is where lots of measurements, good reference data, and patience are key. Note that I first tape the center line on the tank to reference to and maintain symmetry between the left and right side right. Having taped out the white areas, I now mask off everything but the red areas on each body panel and tank. Where the shape is complex and difficult to mask, I use foil wrap. I then apply 1090 base coat followed by three coats of fighting red. As the paint starts to tack up I remove the masking where possible to provide a crisp edge. The harder the paint cures before you do this the more likely it is you can peel the paint back from the edge requiring touch-ups further in the process. I repeat this for the tank, upper cowl and tail sections. With the fighting red fully cured, I can remove any remaining masking and mask off the candy blue areas. I then lay down the 1000 blue metallic base coat, followed by the candy blue top coat. It's important to be extremely consistent with the candy coat and avoid too much overlap or holdover at the end of each pass. In order to get the depth of the candy coat just right, I practiced on spray out cards for several days, making minor adjustments until I got a good match for the original finishing. With all three base colours laid down, it's time to apply the first layers of clear coat. For those fairings and the gas tank that require decals, this will just be a single layer of clear to protect the base coat while I'm applying the decal. For all other parts, I'll apply three layers of clear before doing the final cut and polish. For the decals, I'm using the VF1000R full decal set from AFE Graphics. These are my go-to guys for all decals. The photographs and measurements taken of the original decal placements 
I use a decal gel to allow me to place the new decals as accurately as possible. In the case of the gas tank, I flat back the clear coat with 2000 grit sandpaper to remove the edges where the three paint colors overlap as this would show through the decal in the final application. I'm using transfers to write in the helmet holder lettering. This will be protected with the final layers of clear for a factory look. This is the same technique I use for restoring lettering on switch gear. Decals installed, I now apply two to three coats of clear. In most cases with bikes from this period. The decals were installed over the top of the final layers of clear, with the exception of the gas tank, where the clear was required as additional protection against gasoline spillage. When doing a full OE restoration, it's the choice of the client whether to retain that OE look and have the decals on top of the clear, or have the decals buried in the clear for additional protection and longevity. In the case of the VF1000R, the decals were cleared over from factory. And so here we're following the exact same process as Honda. Final stages of the paint process. We'll be sanding back this clear until all the orange peel is removed. We'll then apply a flow coat, which is another layer of clear coat and once that is cured, we'll cut that clear coat back and polish it to a mirror-like finish. But that will have to be covered in another video in this series.